the greatest American alive. We don't want to have honest conversations about freedom fighters. We be misrepresenting Dr. Martin Luther King. This man was a crazy man. It takes a crazy person to be willing to die for another individual, to be willing to die for you, the greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. In this America, people are poor by the millions. And they find themselves perishing on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. The greatest tragedy of this other America is what it does to little children. Little children in this other America are forced to grow up with clouds of inferiority forming every day in their little mental skies. And as we look at this other America, we see it as an arena of blasted hopes and shattered dreams. Many people of various backgrounds live in this other America. Uh, America. Some are Mexican-American, some are Puerto Ricans, some are Indians, uh, some uh, happen to be from other groups. Millions of them are Appalachian white. In a class war, Dr. Martin Luther King fought for the poor. In a class war, Dr. Martin Luther King was fighting on behalf of the poor. He was fighting for you, the greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. February's coming, and when February gets here, everybody's about to be pro-black. They're going to be so pro-black. It's going to be on everyone's social media. And my favorite part about February, my favorite part about Black History Month, is when black millionaires and black billionaires start talking about the black plight. With no education, you have neo-colonialism instead of colonialism. What we're talking about is there has to be uh, education in the program. That's very important, because if they don't have an education, then they know where you dig what I'm saying? They know where, because they don't even know why they're doing what they're doing. You understand me? You might be, get them caught up in because they're poor, and they want something. And then if they're not educated, they want more. And before you know it, they'll be capitalists. And before you know it, we'd have Negro imperialists. Have Negro imperialists. Have Negro imperialists. There is nothing more interesting than listening to a black millionaire or a black billionaire or a black intellectual talk about the plight of the black person in America when he knows the economic gap. But they'll be capitalists. And before you know it, we'd have Negro imperialists. Have Negro imperialists. The greatest American alive. My favorite part of Black History Month is watching black Americans forget about the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King. I love how they want to focus on racial inequality, but never focus on economic inequality. When Dr. Martin Luther King ended that speech, he ended with poor white Americans. He said Appalachia. Millions of them are Appalachian white. He's talking about West Virginia. He's talking about a whole region of individuals who are economically challenged. But when it comes to the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, we just want to put our fists up. Talking about some black power, black power. We won't have the conversation about economic power. People are poor by the millions. We don't want to have honest conversations about freedom fighters. We be misrepresenting Dr. Martin Luther King. This man was a crazy man. It takes a crazy person to be willing to die for another individual, to be willing to die for you, the greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. And Dr. Martin Luther King laid down his life on behalf of the economically challenged people in America, but we won't represent that legacy. We won't talk about economic oppression. To be so pro-black and so anti-broke, we won't help people who look like us even though we know they're economically challenged. We'll look down on this person. You don't have my degree. Maybe I didn't have your opportunity. And I'm so glad that when you got the opportunity to help other people who look just like you, who came from the same economic despair as you, I'm so glad that you were able to turn your back on them. Have Negro imperialists. Have Negro imperialists. I promise y'all got Martin Luther King fucked up. Y'all be having freedom fighters completely fucked up. You misrepresent their position. Dr. Martin Luther King fought for and died for poor people. President John F. Kennedy was trying to negotiate on behalf of economically challenged people. These people who became martyrs who died for, they didn't die for you to be comfortable. It angers me to misrepresent freedom fighters. As a person who attended church for a large portion of my life, it angers me when people misrepresent Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was a freedom fighter. Do you know what kind of courage it takes to be willing to sacrifice your life for another human being? We won't sacrifice the luxury of a smartphone. We won't sacrifice the luxury of a brand new car. We think that having material gain is freedom in America. In this America, millions of people experience every day 
the opportunity of having life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in all of their dimensions. And in this America, millions of young people grow up in the sunlight of opportunity. But tragically and unfortunately, there is another America. And this other America has a daily ugliness about it that constantly transforms the buoyancy of hope into the fatigue of despair. There are wonderful American people who are suffering right now, but we won't sacrifice any luxury. We won't sacrifice any one of our comforts to go and help these people. We will not create legislation to end poverty in America because we profit off of poverty. Without poverty, I can't get my hamburger when I go to McDonald's. Without poverty, I can't get my cheap clothes when I go to Walmart. Without poverty, I can't go shop at Walgreens. These are all truths that we see every day. American citizens working at companies, investing in these companies with their lives, and they don't get to participate in this economy. They don't get to have nice vehicles. They don't get to wear nice clothes. They don't get to live in nice places. They get to live in roach and rat infested project buildings, but you won't fight for these people because you'll say, just work harder. Get a better job, Brokey. In this America, millions of work-starved men walk the streets daily in search for jobs that do not exist. In this America, millions of people find themselves living in rat-infested, vermin-filled slums. In this America, people are poor by the millions, and they find themselves perishing on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. We literally stand on top of American workers and we just look down on them as if they don't deserve human dignity, as if they don't deserve financial equality. I didn't say racial equality, as if they don't deserve financial equality. If I, as a worker, invest in your company with my life, then I think that I should negotiate a contract that allows me to participate in the value of the company in which I invest in. You do it for your stockholders, so why not do it for a person who actually works for you? Why not do it for a person who actually invests in your company with a life? These are interesting questions to have in America, especially when we're discussing the legacy of freedom fighters. Martin Luther King was a freedom fighter. John F. Kennedy was a freedom fighter. Robert Kennedy was a freedom fighter. Medgar Evers was a freedom fighter. Malcolm X was a freedom fighter. These people laid down their life on behalf of the American person. And I'm asking, how do we honor the legacy of freedom fighters instead of just putting up our fists, talking about Black Lives Matter? Of course they do. Don't fuck with me. Look at the color of my skin. When we talk about economic oppression, who is fighting on behalf of the poor person in America? Who's fighting for all races who are financially challenged in America? Where is Dr. Martin Luther King? I can't be Dr. Martin Luther King. I ain't got no PhD. And so one of you people who went through the system and elevated to the elite status, come back and fight for your folk. You cannot escape absolute poverty and then act like it doesn't exist. That's crazy. Dr. Martin Luther King was able to see the world and with his big degree looked back at the American people and said these people need help. And I'm asking where are these wonderful intellectuals in America right now who are willing to fight for and die for poor people in this country? Do you exist? Because I believe you do. I believe it's time to have more honest conversations on what it takes to be a freedom fighter and what it takes to get actual material gains in America. I don't want to talk about the Republican Party or the Democratic Party. I want to have a conversation about American people working together to end poverty in America, to make sure that the most disadvantaged American citizens have a permanent place to stay so they don't have to worry about the roof over their head. They don't have to worry about the food that goes in their stomach when they're participating in this economy with a life. No, I don't have the capital to invest in your stock market. No, I don't have the money to invest in cryptocurrency. But every day I get my ass up and I clock in. Me clocking in is an investment in this society. Me showing up is my financial investment. Do you know how much a human being is worth? Stop playing with me. I know that if I go to prison, I'm worth $31,500. So what does that mean to the American citizen who's walking on the street is worth? 
$500. That's the starting price. If they're going to be equivalent to an American prisoner, we have to have honest conversations on how we spend money in America. And if we're going to spend $700, $800 billion to go kill people, then we need to make sure that our American citizens have a place to call their own a home. We have to ensure that we uphold the legacy of wonderful American citizens who died to end poverty in America. The system will squash you. So you have to stand up together and lift your voice together to end this nasty ass economically oppressive system. I ain't got to wait till February. It's January right now. You're here right now on the greatest place on earth. And this is the only greatest place on earth because of you, the greatest American alive. The Greatest American Alive. Thank you for listening to me. It makes me angry. The American worker is not represented by our political system. That bothers me. When they pass a budget to divvy out money, the American worker does not have a seat at the table to have a conversation on how this money is split up. And so if you want to fight for freedom, then please contribute to Project Daddy. Cash app at the bottom, dollar sign, PJDDY. All day, I'm going to study to have the rhetoric to come and fight on behalf of the American person. Tell the truth and get some power. Share this video to get some power. Let's work together to honor the freedom fighters. If we want to protect this wonderful democracy that we call America, then some of us are going to have to become freedom fighters. Willing to lay down your life, some of us are going to have to be some heroes. The greatest American alive. You are the greatest American alive. 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 The greatest American alive.